Hello everyone, I am Kuldeep Sharma. Welcome you all to today's session of daily news analysis where we are going to look at the most important news headlines from the Hindi newspaper as well as the Indian Express. So let's look at the first news headline. So first news headline is regarding a BJP candidate who was earlier uh, the judge of a Cal uh, uh, in Calcutta High Court. He has been censured. Censured basically means that he has been criticized by Election Commission of India for using derogatory terms against a opposition member. So why, uh, yeah, who has taken action against him? So it is the Election Commission of India who has taken action against him and uh, and the, a bar of campaigning for 24 hours, hours has been put up on him. So let's understand under what law or under what regulation this action has been taken. So the concerned law, yeah, the concerned uh, area of contention here is model code of conduct. So it is not that we have not discussed it earlier also. So it's kind of a revision for you all again. So let's look at the basic points of it. So you should understand that it is only a code of conduct and it's only model in nature. Basically, it's just a framework. So one thing which you should know is that it is non-binding. It is non-legal code. What do you understand by non-legal code? That there would not be any repercussions. No legal action can be taken. No legal action can be taken against a person if he violates the MCC. For example, can this candidate be disqualified if he has violated MCC? The answer would be no, which means there is only moral authority. There is only moral authority for it. The second point is who enforces it? So it is the Election Commission of India, which is responsible for conduct of fair and free elections in India, is responsible for enforcement of the model code of conduct. Next question, what is the operation period? When does this function, this MCC comes into existence? So it starts, it begins on the date of announcement of election. So it begins on the date of announcement of election and it operates till it operates it or ends on the result day only. So whenever the result is declared on that day, it becomes dysfunctional then. Applicability of this particular MCC, so it applies on the government, basically the political party who is in government, it applies to all the political parties, it applies to all the candidates. Next question is what is the origin or when was the MCC came into existence for the first time? So it was in Kerala in 1960 and in Lok Sabha election it was first used in the year 1962. Next is what are the consequences if you do not follow it? So usually in most of the cases, the only consequence which uh, e Election Commission of India is uh, happy to uh, provide is for campaign uh, suspension. So usually a temporary campaign uh, suspension is provided. For example, in this case, it has been for 24 hours. So usually a person cannot campaign for the next 24 or 48 hours, which basically means one to two days, a campaign is suspended. However, you should remember, this is very important. So if a political party has uh, violated the model code of conduct it can do certain kind of action it can take certain actions for example uh, 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 suspend suspending the campaign however it cannot deregister a political party a political party cannot be deregistered by election commission of india for violation of mcc and also there is no disqualification which means a candidate cannot be disqualified a candidate cannot be disqualified for violating of mcc Moving on to the next news. So next news is from the editorial, the risk of Russia's nuclear postures. So it is in context of the Russia-Ukraine war and it is it has been a long time since we have discussed Russia-Ukraine war. So let's look at some of the basic facts. So Russia-Ukraine war, it started on 24th February 2022, which means it is more than two years now. So it's more than two years and the war is still continuing and we have no sign that it's going to end soon. Second, who are the main two people involved in this particular war? So from the side of Russia, we have Vladimir Putin and on the, on the side of, of Ukraine, we have Volodymyr Zelensky. So if you remember last to last year, there was a question where the spelling of Volodymyr Zelensky was asked. Volodymyr Zelensky ki spelling puchi gai thi. I don't think it's a very good question asking the spelling of a particular person. And one issue, yeah, one task for you is to write down in the comment box, who is the prime minister of Russia? Write down in the comment box who is the Prime Minister of Russia. He is the President. So this war is some people consider it as a continuation of a 2014 war between Russia and Ukraine. So in the year 2014, there is a particular region known as Crimea. So Crimea was earlier part of Ukraine. However, in 2014, it was annexed by Russia by military action. Okay, so Crimea is a very important part, a very important geographical region also. It's a very important geographical region and Russia actually occupied it on one context or the other in the year 2014. 
what are the main reasons what are the names you are going to hear when you talk about russia ukraine war so the main two regions where the russia ukraine war is taking place is the donets oblast and your luhansk so oblast oblast is basically the states or the regions is known as oblast in the ukrainian term so donets region luhansk region which is combinedly called as donbas region so donbas region is what it is basically a combination of donetsk and luhansk next next now i am talking you i am giving you certain points regarding this particular article what this article is about so this article is talking about that the russia has uh, has now threatened to use nuclear weapons to use tactical nuclear weapons what are tactical nuclear weapons so uh, nuclear nuclear weapons which are smaller in size and which have would, which would have only limited impact are known as tactical nuclear weapons so russia has uh, decided that it's going to lower the nuclear threshold basically at what level or at what stage uh, the the nuclear weapons could be used by russia is going to lower it down so you should understand what is the main purpose of nuclear weapons so the main purpose of nuclear weapons is basically causing deterrence so you become so powerful you become so powerful because you have nuclear weapon no other country is going to attack you first so let's understand what is india's nuclear doctrine ki india nuclear weapons ke liye kis type se usko use karta hai ya kis type ke principle usne lay down kare hain so first policy very important is that we have a no first use policy which means if there is a war between two countries with regard to india let's say india and pakistan is at war india is never going to use or threaten to use nuclear weapons first only pakistan uses this then only i am going to use it second is a principle of credible minimum deterrence what do you means that the stockpile of nuclear weapons which i am to go uh, which i am going to have is going to depend on whether i am able to create a deterrence which is minimum and is credible that the other person or the other state should be should believe that i have a credible stockpile of those weapons and it should not be able to attack me and third that there would be civilian control of nuclear weapons we are going to study which uh, which uh, uh, which particular forces command is responsible for nuclear weapons however the final decision to launch a nuclear weapons is with the civilians only the civilian government which is your your present government so these are some of the context some of the important facts with regard to this article moving on so again there is a statement or there was a particular seminar being organized in the defense forces and it was there was a lecture given by uh, by general anil chauhan who is the present chief of defense staff so let's talk about certain facts about the chief of defense staff so chief of defense staff is he is the senior most appointee in the armed forces he is the highest rank official so he is the highest rank official you should remember okay i'll explain it to you in the next point cds is the highest ranking official however he is not above the armed forces your navy chief and your air force chief he is not above them he is bus just first among the equals next is what is the main role of the cds so the main role is he is a link between armed forces and the civilian leadership so if there is any requirement of the armed forces then cds becomes a connecting lines between the armed forces and civilian leadership so what is the tenure so there is no fixed tenure which means there it, it does not says that a CD, cds office is to be uh, uh, is to be held by a particular person for the next 3 4 years it is only provides that the retirement age is 65 years so one can become a cds at the age of 55 also one can become a uh, cds at the age of 60 also and one can one can become a cds at the age of 64 only however the retirement age would be fixed at 65 years next he is prime center paris what does prime center paris means it basically means first among equals and why we are using this term so i am using it in this context that the cds the cds is not cds is not above the armed forces the armed army chief navy chief and the air force chief he is just the first he is the first in line when it's come to the four navy chief but he is equal to all of them next is who was the first cds of india so it was general bipin rawat general bipin rawat appointed in the year 2020 however he died in a plane crash he died in a plane crash before completing his tenure uh, and because of this we had to make yeah uh, make a new cds and the current cds the second cds is your anil chauhan it is anil chauhan now this article also talks about theater command so what is a theater command so command is basically a place from where a particular armed force is going to function so if 
usually the command the command area is divided among the three forces so if there is a particular command it would be under the army there would be a particular command which would be under the navy and there would be a particular command which would be under air force however if i create a theater command all these three forces are going to be under a single command officer so there would be one single officer he can come from any of the forces and all the resources and uh, and the resources all the three forces is going to be under that person single command so what is a theater command it is a unified command which means all three forces are together under one person based on the theater of war for example i can decide that the pakistan border is one single theater it's one single theater and i can create a theater command for the pakistan border which means armed forces all the three air force your army and your navy would be under uh, would be uh, under one single officer where the three armed forces work together under a single command so when did the idea of theater command came up so it was after your 1998 कारगिल वॉर 1998-9 कारगिल वॉर so we created a committee known as db shekhetkar committee and this was this committee which recommended a theater command so currently what is the structure currently we have 17 commands in total like i told you there would be separate commands for armed forces for your a, um, for your army your navy and your air force so right now we have 17 commands seven are with the army seven are of the air force and three are with the navy apart from it we do not have a theater command but we have a tri service command so it's very similar to uh, it would be very similar to a theater command only however we have a tri service command in the andaman and nicobar islands also known as the andaman and nicobar command and we also have one strategic forces command and this is this is the body this is the command which is responsible for your nuclear weapons so the security of nuclear weapons is the responsibility of this particular forces command moving on congress wants to grant reservation based on religion says modi so there is a particular statement i thought because the reservation comes times and again and many people get confused with the basis of reservation let's study reservation in very short so what is reservation in india so it's a type of affirmative action so what is affirmative action so affirmative action you can divide this one it means affirm affirming an action affirming an action what does affirmative means which means we are trying to empower we are trying to empower a community or a person we are trying to empower a community or a person so that he becomes he becomes powerful in a society he becomes powerful in a society so that is the meaning of affirmative action reservation in india is is a kind of a policy where we try to provide we try to empower we try to empower a community so that he becomes a useful member or he become a useful or a productive member of the society he gets his place in the society so that's why we provide affirmative action so in the constitution which articles deal with reservation so there may be other other section also other articles also which may deals with reservation also however these are article 14 15 and 16 which provides which provides state which provides state the power to give reservation which provides the state the power to give reservation so so what article 14 is very general in sense it talks about only right to equality however article 15 and 16 are very specific under article 15 reservation in education reservation in education and more appropriately it prohibits discrimination it prohibits discrimination in general parlance in general life there should not be any discrimination however article 16 is very specific and it actually provides the state to provide for reservation in jobs it provides for reservation in jobs so these are the main articles from which the reservation power comes from the constitution now who gets reservation as per constitution so article 15 16 and other articles are very specific that who is eligible for reservation so the term which we are looking for is sne backwardness which is basically social and educational backwardness so if a community is socially and educationally backward then only reservation could be provided however in the year 2019 by 103rd constitutional amendment act we have included economic ground your economic standing as one of the grounds to provide for reservation to provide for reservation and finally we have a class 
uh, in terms of economy also which gets uh, uh, which gets reservation which is the economic weaker section let's look at how the supreme court has decided over it so first case the very important reservation case is your indra sani versus union of india case which is a 1992 case and in this case the obc the obc was recognized as a backward class of citizens and 27% reservation provided to them was approved by the by the supreme court however in this particular case certain other regulations were also provided for example one thing we said they said was that the reservation should not exceed the 50% limit it should not exceed the 50% limit and of the 27% obc there should also be a creamy layer which means which means people in the obc category who have already succeeded and who have become the creamy layer who have become successful in their life should not become part of this however in the future judgments the court the courts have diluted this 50% limit and now the reservation can even exceed your 50% limit also next is your janet abhiyan versus union of india case so this is your 2020 second case in which this 1 103 constitutional amendment act of 2019 was challenged which means that the constitution should not allow uh, reservation on the basis of economic standing however in this particular case ews reservation was also allowed was here was held as constitutional in this particular case the supreme court declared that ews reservation is also constitutional so this is a small uh, context a small background of how reservation policy is followed in india moving on so one news from your indian express also so here uh, although this article is self explanatory and you have, if you have access to the indian express you should read this article however let's study some facts about the organization which is involved here which is your icc so icc stands for your international criminal court international criminal court and why is it important because it is the only permanent international criminal tribunal so why we i am calling it permanent because there can be international criminal court for specific war crime also however it is a permanent body from where does it gets its origin so it originated in the year 1998 by the rome statute which actually creates the icc international criminal law court next when did it become functional it became functional on 1st july 2020 2002 and this this is very important we are going to just know now why why next where is the headquarter so the headquarter is in the haag which is a which is a capital city of the netherlands how many members are there so the members are 123 however some of the countries have not signed the rome statutes and because of this they are not members of the icc some of the prominent non members are your country india us russia china and even israel israel has also not signed the rome statute which means it is the this particular uh, international criminal court does not have any jurisdiction over israel also next what is the composition of this what is the composition so there are 18 judges who comes from different countries and they have a nine year term so i hope you know this that international court of justice icj also have nine judge uh, have 15 judges and all of them have a nine year term so what is the jurisdiction so this is the most important point, uh, point that icc has jurisdiction over which all people so remember this it provides yeah, it can take action against individuals not states but individuals so individuals who have committed yeah who have been charged for genocide who have been committed who have been charged with crimes against humanities who have been charged with crimes for war crimes and who have been charged with crimes of aggression so these are the four category of crime if a individual is accused of committing one of these then this icc or this icc can take action against them next which on which countries is this law yeah the icc have jurisdiction so remember only the countries only the member states who have signed the rom statutes would be would uh, would become binding would become uh, uh, would be under the jurisdiction of this international criminal court so countries where offense is committed for example right now there is a arrest warrant being asked against israel's prime minister netanyahu as well as over leaders of hamas who are right now in gaza so gaza is considered part of palestine palestine is a member palestine is a member of icc they have signed they have signed the rome statute however israel has not signed it so country where offense is committed or perpetrator country is member of icc so by this definition you would know that obviously palestine which means gaza which means hamas and the people who are involved individuals who are involved in these kind of crimes in the state would have jurisdiction however israel members or israel individual would also uh, can, uh, would also come under the jurisdiction of icc and the reason being 
कंट्री वेयर ऑफेंस इज कमिटेड तो कंट्री वेयर ऑफेंस इज कमिटेड इज पैलेस्टीन पैलेस्टीन इज अ मेंबर एंड इट हैज बीन कमिटेड बाय इजराइल बिकॉज ऑफ दिस आईसीसी वुड आल्सो हैव जुरिस्डिक्शन ओवर इजराइल आल्सो और परपेट्रेटर कंट्री इज मेंबर ऑफ आईसीसी सो हमास मेंबर्स वुड गेट वुड गेट जस्टिस अंडर आईसीसी बिकॉज बिकॉज दे आर द मेंबर्स दे आर द परपेट्रेटर कंट्रीज दे बिलोंग टू द कंट्री व्हिच इज अ मेंबर ऑफ आईसीसी नेक्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट सो व्हेन डस द जुरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ ICC starts so it starts only from 1st July 2000 so so if a person is accused of genocide in the year 2001 in the year 2001 then the ICC would not have any jurisdiction it has a prospective jurisdiction starting from 1st July 2002 only and finally is the decision is the decision of ICC is binding so the answer is yes the decision is binding on member state so for example if benjamin netanyahu comes to a country or goes to a country like united kingdom which is a member which is a member of icc and let's say there is a arrest warrant of icc there is a arrest warrant of icc against benjamin netanyahu then united kingdom is obliged is obliged to arrest benjamin netanyahu and send it to icc however if benjamin netanyahu travels to these country india us russia etc then these countries are not going to take any action because they are not bound by this icc treaty or the rome statute treaty so these are some of the news headlines important from today's newspaper i hope to see you in the next class with a new set of headlines that's it from my side thank you and have a very nice day